next up we have uh, Jim from the XX Network, formerly known as Elixir. So Jim, I'll let you kick things off. So thanks to Masari for having us, uh, for first listing us and also including us in uh, Masari Mainnet. Um, I've retitled uh, this presentation, the XX Coin, the first high performance cryptocurrency. High performance means a couple of things, um, and we'll get into that. Before I start, I just wanted to share a few pictures uh, just to give a sort of human touch to this. Uh, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, that's the a view out the window of the islands uh, where we have a development team uh, working on the consensus protocol in the digital currency. Um, we call that Praxis. The people in the middle, that's the team in Los Angeles, which uh, has traditionally been the Elixir team. Uh, in the bottom is David Chom, uh, who is the uh, founder of the XX Network, announcing the consensus protocol in Berlin at Web Summit. And up in the right-hand corner is, uh, that's me announcing the messenger, XX Messenger in uh, Singapore. And then a, a, a group of our team in a panel discussion with David, David in Singapore. So that's just sort of get to give you a little sense as to some vi visuals uh, on us and the team. Um, so why do we call the XX coin uh, high performance crypto? There's a number of reasons. I'll just rattle right off. Uh, it is national lab level secure digital cash. We use hash based cryptography, uh, no cryptography uh, that relies on government standards. Uh, and it is quantum secure. Uh, it settles in 10 seconds. We can bring a transaction to finality in 10 seconds, uh, which and, and the ability to do that is, is you know, uh, typical of cash. Uh, we have two important privacy features that basically traditionally have turned a, a check into cash. One is that the linking of transactions from a particular pay or payer are broken. There's no way to see a succession of payments for an individual. And then also the linkage between the payer and the payee is broken. That is, the, uh, the, uh, no one knows who the payer is. Here are the slides that you didn't see the first time, all right? Um, these are the pictures I was talking about. Uh, look at them real quickly. There's the Caymans, Los Angeles, Berlin, Singapore. Here's the slide I was working on. Okay, so here we are. So the things I was saying was quantum level secure, uh, settles in 10 seconds, and we're talking about the privacy features. The first is the linking of transactions, payment to payment to payment, and then the other is the the is the ability to hide that, and the other is to break the the relationship between a payer and a payee, or sender and a receiver of a messenger of a message. Um, the XX coin is designed as a sort of traditional uh, blockchain crypto because it it uh, supports the payment mechanism. Uh, that we have uh, for the for the platform. It also is used to incentivize nodes. And of course, it's a way for the community to, to support and participate in the network. Um, so we're really sort of Satoshi purists, right? The, the point of the XX network and the point of the XX coin is to support a uh, like a truly decentralized life. Um, and uh, that's also why, and we'll get into it, and you'll see why this is true. That's why we have two projects that have come together for the XX ne network. We have Praxis and the digital currency, the cash, um, the payment mechanism, the store of value, the quantum security. Uh, and then we have um, the, uh, we use random sample voting, David's voting technology to support our governance mechanism because uh, we want this platform uh, to survive uh, going into the future, both in terms of, of nodes being able to make code changes, but also in terms of community members uh, being able to decide on uh, future governance decisions around uh, how people interact with the network. Um, we're able to su support smart contracts and dApps much like Ethereum. And probably the thing that we really brought that nobody else, I think, uh, really has in quite the same way is real private secure communication. Uh, we run a mixed network. It's like Tor on steroids. That effectively is uh, is is what Elixir is. It is a, it's called CMix is the uh, is the technical name, and it basically it is a next generation next generation implementation of David's mixed network uh, technology. It uses pre computation and it's very very fast. It's about a thousand times 
uh, faster than uh, it would be without pre-computation. So we have these five things that allows us to support sort of true participative, uh, you know, decentralized democracy. You can make a living, you can make decisions, uh, you can agree to contracts, and you can communicate about uh, private issues, both for political issues and also for private personal issues around healthcare and family. And um, okay, so how does it work? Um, basically, what we have is we bring together, we call it a temporal team, a team of nodes to process each block of transactions. And on the right, you'll see that there's a, a little envelope, that's a message, those are payments. We have an anonymity set of a block of transactions, and it is uh, data for input output for dApps, it is uh, payments, and it is messages. And the, all those bits are put together into one block of transactions, which is processed by a team of nodes. That team of nodes exists only to process that one block of tr transactions before it's disbanded and a new team of nodes is selected. So you can see in the endorser nodes, uh, you see all those light, those are the full uh, population of nodes that are selected for the team. And then the subset is selected for the endorser. So you see those dark blue boxes and you see uh, on the right BP, the, the, uh, that is the block producer is endorsed by a small set of endorser nodes. Same thing, there's a random sampling and a, a team of endorser nodes comes together to do the endorsement. So we have teams that are selected randomly and then dispersed and selected again and dispersed. That's part of our, our magic. And, uh, and, and as each block is endorsed, uh, of course, you know, it's basically recorded on a somewhat traditional blockchain and that's part of the Braxis uh, consensus protocol. Um, this is an actual screenshot of the XX messenger, uh, the alpha messenger, which was used by a couple thousand people to test the speed of the uh, Alphanet implementation of the XX network. And I just wanted to flash this on the screen because we really have the capability to support a messenger which provides uh, privacy and, and hides your social graph. It hides who you're talking and communicating with. Okay, so let's get a little bit more de into detail about the consensus protocol that we use. Um, we call it P proof of QRS, proof of quantum random sample. And what I'd said before is we, we have a small group of endorsers that's selected randomly and they use a, a very novel compact group signature in which they all come together quickly and sign. There are no pairwise signing. And this is something that we came up with. It's very efficient. It's a small number of bits. So we can send it, for example, to a, uh, a smartphone so a user can check the signature. Uh, it has a lot of implications, the efficiency of it. The fact that we sample the uh, a constant number of endorsers from the broader uh, group of nodes is critically important because it means that as the as the large population of nodes grows and as the the ability of the platform of the xx network to process large uh, larger and larger volumes of transactions as it scales the group of endorser nodes remains the same size the sample size the size that we of endorsers that we randomly select is always the same size so basically that means that the consensus protocol does not slow down as the uh, network grows, and this is the scaling issue. It's a huge, huge issue um, that we've overcome. And uh, on a related note, uh, we use hash-based cryptography. Um, it's very strong kind of brute force, just large random numbers. Um, and uh, and th that's where the quantum security comes from. Um, the, the reason we call it proof of quantum random sample is that what we do is we allow, we, we insist that nodes, when they join the network, that they commit to an unmanipulable, unpredictable randomness. And this, I guess the best way to explain this is the problem is the nodes can, you know, they are running all the code and they control the code. Uh, and so to avoid attacks on the network uh, and malevolent changes to code, what we do is we make them commit to a randomness which they cannot control. And that's basically how we take their, we defeat uh, that threat and take the power of, uh, you know, take away a, a lot of their power to, to attack the, either the network overall or to manipulate a particular block of transactions. Okay, in terms of what's happened so far, 
um, and our token economics. We have 70% of our, our coins have been set aside for sales. We had an initial sale uh, already outside the United States and I'll, uh, I'll detail that. And uh, we have 5% for the ecosystem and then 25% set aside uh, for all the creators and the, the development teams. Uh, here's uh, where we are in terms of milestones. Um, we've, we've, we have an XX Collective app that we released. We selected uh, a pool of beta nodes. Um, we uh, completed the consensus protocol and moved a team to uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, released the XX Messenger Alpha, and we're currently working on uh, beta net. All right, on the road to, to mainnet. We raised, uh, sold just a little bit under $10 million in coins, about 3.5% of the total. We had 500 contributors from 55 countries, five continents. It was unfortunately a no US person sale because of the regulatory confusion in the United States. And this amount um, includes our original supporters uh, and uh, the notable supporters there, I think that people know are Chris Larson, Roger Baer, um, the second largest financial services uh, provider in Korea also backed us. Okay, so right now we have uh, 150 uh, beta nodes who are launching in July. Uh, we we have um, the original, we color coded them. So we call them white, blue, and teal groups. Those are the original groups. And then we added, we opened it again. And just in the last two weeks, we've had 230 applications for what we call the Violet group which is uh, you know, new people coming in. It's, on five, it's gonna run on five continents. One of the big significant things is that we can run those nodes using consumer grade hardware. So it's not pro prohibitively expensive from a capital standpoint. We just released uh, 60,000 lines of code in Go for people's review. It includes primitives, the message formats, the data structures, and also the crypto. Uh, we're working on governance based on random sample voting that, that uh, David uh, has created. And we're doing an al some alpha polling and voting project. We just announced that in Berlin uh, just this last Friday. Uh, we're re-releasing the XX Messenger as the beta with a new user discovery, uh, the ability to support much greater volume. And we're actually working on a very interesting contact tracing uh, functionality in which uh, we use Bluetooth uh, so that people know when they're near each other, but we hide it using the privacy functions of CMIX so that basically uh, you can accrue information about where you've been and who you've been near, but it's it's protected privately until and if you need it. Uh, what's coming up is right now we have 100 nodes uh, running the consensus in alpha and we're working on a block explorer. Um, okay, so these are just the sort of, you know, where you can understand and read more about us. Uh, there are a number of uh, technical papers. There's the Praxis technical paper that describes the consensus protocol in detail and uh, the digital currency, the XX coin itself. There's a Elixir architecture brief with, which goes over the CMIX, the mixed network architecture in detail. And then there's the overall next XX network white paper. This is all available at our website. It's xx.network. We have a series of webinars and other videos on YouTube and we have a full social media presence which you can check uh, on, the, on the website and the join page. This is distinctive. This is a picture of our XX Collective app. It's the way people have been able, community members have been able to easily follow us uh, and it allowed them to see the, uh, the alpha net and it will allow people to see the beta net in, in real time performing uh, and allows people to track where we are, news, uh, press releases, technical documentation. We have 6,500 users. It's available on iOS and Android and I encourage people to download it. It's a very easy way to track what we're doing on the way to mainnet. And mainnet for us is coming, you know, uh, at the end of this year. Um, so it's all happening. You could scan this if you'd like to just uh, easily join, uh, join us on our website. These are pages of the join pages. So you can follow us on social media. You can download the collective sign up for our email list. And that is uh, it. I hope I hit the 15 minute um, bo bogey and I'm gonna move to questions and answers. Thanks very much, everybody. All right, hey Jim. Uh, so a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, so one, I mean, you, you touched on um, uh, contact tracing, uh, potentially adding contract tracing functionality into the, the Messenger app. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to, to hear what are some use cases you see evolving on the network? 
Yeah, so it's it's an odd thing, but um, if you think about it, starting with the privacy features of the XX Messenger, um, one of the distinctive things, I mean, it's a sort of the core the core piece of the messenger is that we don't steal your contact list like most messengers do. Otherwise, uh, we would be basically violating everyone's privacy and taking all their information. So the way we put you in touch with someone else is through a, a, a crypto-based handshake. That's why the screenshot said share keys. So effectively, what what we're doing is building into the user discovery protocol to in which people uh, authorize communicating with each other um, a way of basically knowing when you're close to someone. So basically, we collect the information about when you're close to someone. They don't see it. You don't see it. But if you choose to share it, you can. So basically, what happens is we create we can we it looks like we have the ability to create a, uh, a set of data around people that you've been near, and then you can have the ability to reveal that information if there's agreement. And so uh, it sort of like slices the Gordian knot of how you collect this information, but it's completely private and under your control unless you need it. And so uh, it's very interesting because it, it could, be possible for people to collect information in advance and then we'd wipe it every two weeks because that's how long it would be relevant. And then it could be revealed in the case that you find that you do have coronavirus or you have been exposed. Um, so that's a very interesting sort of use case of the privacy features of the XX network sort of underpinned by CMIX. Gotcha. Um, so another question on potential uh, use cases. Uh, earlier in the presentation, you mentioned uh, XX coin is potential store of value. So I'm curious to, to hear how you guys think about uh, just in general, the store of value uh, space within cryptocurrencies. Uh, like, how do you see that landscape evolving? Uh, are there any power laws to store of values? Um, how do you guys think you uh, compete with Bitcoin in this space? Uh, just kind of like, where does XX network fit in? I mean, I would answer it in sort of a threat analysis kind of classical threat analysis. Um, I mentioned during the presentation that uh, that nodes, the XX nodes require only uh, consumer grade hardware to run. And basically uh, what that means is we have a very broadly distributed group of nodes. Uh, it's people all over the world. And we do a little bit of a technical thing. It's on the website. We bin them um, so that we can get, you know, fast network connectivity. Um, but basically we have much broader distribution in terms of um, where nodes are, which countries they are in, which networks they're on, where they're located geographically than say Bitcoin or Ethereum by a wide margin. And uh, because of the, the consumer grade hardware, we also, it's much more democratic in the sense that it's a lot of individuals, it's not large institutions. So in terms of um, you know decentralization, we score very well on that. Um, and that's without the actual, you know, approach to the crypto that we have. So basically, um, you know, the, the history of cryptography has been that uh, academics and the NSA in the United States have developed cryptography and created standards built in trap doors and then t told everybody that this is the best stuff. Uh, we don't use any of that. We use hash based, uh, basically large random numbers. So, um, as quantum computing comes online, and it's been about a year now since Google announced that, uh, you know, that they'd had a big breakthrough. And our suspicion is that, that that means the nation states, you know, the big nation states have it too, uh, that there is a threat in terms of quantum computing. And we've sort of future-proofed our network against that. So in terms of being able to crack the network, crack the, you know, crack the cryptography, we think we're in a kind of like next generation uh, position relative to the, you know, large existing currencies of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that was, that was very informative. Um, yeah, so thanks, Jim, uh, for representing XX Network. And uh, I will hand it off to, to Wilson next. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks, Ryan. Hang in there, everybody. It's kind of a crazy time. I should have said that at the beginning of the presentation. Thanks, Ryan. Really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Talk to you. See you guys.